so hi, uh, I'm Anish Mangal and I'm from New Delhi in India originally and I've been working with the OLPC projects in the, since the last three and a half years or so and uh, yeah, I've, uh, I was originally working for a semiconductor firm until 2010 and that's when I learned about OLPC and kind of contributed a little bit as a volunteer and then I got hooked on like many people here at the conference have. Uh, went to Paraguay, uh, spent six months at the deployment there uh, and that's kind of uh, what sold me to the idea of uh, computers in education where I could actually see it being used in the classroom by teachers and kids and then it sort of became a calling or after that and I've been to Uruguay, I've worked with Australia after that and never looked back since. Cool, and then what specifically kind of things did you do with those deployments? Sure, so when we went there in Paraguay, uh, we worked on a new release of the sugar operating system there and we called it Dextrose. Uh, and that's when I kind of transitioned from being a volunteer to a person who's working on it full time. And that's kind of when we also founded uh, Activity Central with Dave Farning. So what we did was we talked with the teachers, we talked with the administrators and figured out what their key problems were. Uh, we packaged them into a solution, uh, tested it, and made sure it didn't have any problems in the classroom. So that's pretty much what we've been doing. So. Cool. And then talk, you know, and I'll just throw this out to talk a little bit about um, the process where the teachers ask you for, you know, what they need, how you work on it. And, and you know, in your mind, how does this fit into like, there's sometimes talk of like cultural imperialism and, and that sort of thing? Sure. Uh, so actually, uh, being in ed tech, like education technology, uh, is very interesting. Uh, I'm from an engineering background, so I kind of had to jump over the fence uh, and go to the education side uh, to be able to make sense with the teachers. And uh, I guess it, what you need to do is listen to what their problems are and, uh, and fit into their environment rather than uh, airdropping a solution on them which won't be ultimately of much use. So I guess the key here is to really understand their key needs and to help them get their job done easier rather than forcing a new uh, paradigm or, or way of teaching, I guess, in a, in a sense. Cool. And then what would you say are some of the most difficult parts of, of working with the XO? And, you know, what are some of the hardest parts where it just makes you almost want to quit? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the EXO is a great machine, to be honest, a uh, little green machine. But uh, yeah, over the years, de development on it has been tricky. Uh, and the idea of an EXO is quite revolutionary. So to get uh, teachers to understand it and make effective use of it, and for us to be able to uh, uh, develop features that will be useful on the EXO uh, has, has been tricky over the years. Uh, I guess the biggest problem is one one of communication, uh, as as with many ed tech projects. Uh, the laptop itself is uh, pretty nice, but yeah, I mean there there are some issues here and there which kind of add up and make the whole whole experience go sour in some cases. Yeah. Okay, and then what are your most favorite parts of the program? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, the most fulfilling part of it is uh, the kids having. The, you see the kids ha uh, using the laptop and learning through it. Uh, for me, a very a personal moment was when I was in Bhagmalpur in May earlier this year. And that's when we installed a school server and we enabled internet. And you could see uh, uh, the glint in the eyes of the kids uh, being able to use Google for the first time in their lives. And that's what kind of uh, keeps you going uh, despite all the issues. Cool. And then... What do you see as the, the future for um, what you're doing? Um, OLP, possibly beyond, uh, mm -hmm. notebook versus tablet versus phone, that right. sort of thing. Right, so uh, uh, six years ago when OLPC started, uh, the concept of computers and education in a universal sense was pretty alien. But now uh, even the most developing countries are, are warming up to the fact that 
uh, we need some kind of technology and i think in general the future of education technology in in developing nations is is bright but uh, if it's not done correctly then uh, you end up using a glorified blackboard or or just an e-reader and my fear is that it doesn't end up being that and and you can extract the maximum value out of it so going forward yeah i mean there there are many countries who are trying to explore the ideas of how they could use computers and if we could uh, not let the lessons of old pc be forgotten uh, that's the big big thing for me if you were to um if someone was asking, oh, I'd like to volunteer with this project, um, what, would you encourage them? What would you say to them or her? So, yeah, so the, the OLPC community uh, is, I mean, we are a bunch of slightly crazy people, so you have to be a little bit crazy to be able to work with us, but uh, we are very welcoming. Uh, there are a few exciting projects which are happening and actually growing at this stage. Uh, one of them which I am volunteering for is uh, the School Server Community Edition. And then there are projects with uh, dextros running on any sugar laptops or, or even tablets. So uh, f I guess you, you need to have a passion in uh, helping kids learn. And that's pretty much all you need. And, and you'll feel right at home here. Cool. Excellent. Cool.